Hello, everybody. Good morning. <clears throat> My name is Andrew. I am one of the student recruitment officers here at UA92, and I would like to welcome you to the UA92 virtual Teachers and Advisors Conference for 2020. Um, I hope you all had a fantastic weekend, and uh, we do appreciate you joining us on your Monday morning. Hopefully, you have an enjoyable uh, and informative morning with us. Um, I've just had a look through the attendees. It's great to see so many, um, so many of you with us, so many familiar names that we've been working with over the last couple of years. If you would like to just type in the, in the chat box, introduce yourself, say where you're from, and it'd be great to get some active chat in that, in that group as we, uh, as we go through the session today. So um, here we are, we are in the UA92 campus. The team is sort of dotted around the campus today in different rooms, but um, we celebrated our first birthday here at UA92 in September, and we welcomed our second cohort of students. And um, it's, it's been a hugely exciting year, despite the challenges you know, that we've all had to face. And we're really looking forward to sharing some of our latest developments with you today. Um, and also on, on behalf of everyone here at UA92, we, we just wanna thank you really both for your continuing hard work in everything you do. We know all too well uh, the challenges that people in schools and colleges have had to, have had to face dealing with, with COVID-19 and, and all the challenges that that brings with it. And, and also for your continued support in everything that we do whether that is with sharing information about open days or, um, or booking in myself or any, anyone else in the outreach team to deliver sessions with your students and in your schools and colleges. Um, we are very grateful for, for that fantastic working relationship that we have and, and, and long may that continue. Um, so this morning is an opportunity really for, for you to take some time out uh, for some professional development. And, and I do hope you find the sessions useful. Uh, our event today is going to be hosted by everyone across our student recruitment team um, here at UA92. Some of them you will know, some uh, may be new to you. So first of all, we're going to be joined by Gareth Smith, who is our Director of uh, Student Affairs. Uh, Isabel Panton is going to be with us today, who actually joins us for her very first day at UA92. She's our new Head of Student Recruitment Admissions, so, uh, so welcome, Isabel. And as well as that, we've got Katie Campbell and Rachel Todd, who, along with myself, make up uh, our student recruitment and schools liaison team. So um, welcome, guys, uh, and you'll all get a chance to, to speak with them later. Drop a message, uh, any questions in the chat, and, and we'll make sure that those people answer those questions for you. So we, we do have a jam-packed schedule for today. Um, we, we send it over to you. Hopefully you've seen some sessions in there that are going to be interesting to you. Gareth is going to start us off uh, with an update on what's new here at UA92. And then at half past 10, Rachel is going to host a panel session with some of our industry partners uh, for a labour market update. And then after that, Isabel will be chatting with um, one of our co-founders, Class of 92 member Gary Neville. Um, and then Katie will be hosting a Q&A with some of our amazing student ambassadors. So if you've got any questions for any of those people, pop them in the Q&A, pop them in the chat, and we'll make sure that those questions get over to them. We'll get them answered for you as well. Um, so shall we get started? Okay, I'm going to hand over now to Gareth Smith, um, who's going to be hosting our first session, Updates and Developments at UA92. Over to you, Gareth. Thanks, Andrew, um, and I, I second your welcome to everybody. It's great to have so many of you here online today and great to see you all kind of type into the chat. Um, so obviously we'd love to be welcoming you to University Academy 92 today to see our kind of state-of-the-art campus. As Andrew said, it's only been open for kind of 14 months. Um, but what we'll do is I'll start with the next best thing, which is just showing you a video of how our campus looks. <laughs>
obviously one of the uh, benefits of doing this virtually today is I can see we've got people joining us from all over the UK and we did a number of you from, from right across the um, world. So that video of campus was taken kind of pre, pre-COVID kind of very early on this year. Um, the first thing I just want to start with is going through some of the developments that we've made to kind of keep uh, people safe on campus. And obviously your students who've been chosen to join us, I just want to talk through what we're doing because I know it's quite high profile at the moment the way universities are and aren't handling it well so I wanted to talk about what UA92 is doing so what we've done is we've got social distancing in place all the way across campus um, so what that means is that if unfortunately we do have a student who tests positive for COVID they're at least two meters apart whenever they're in the classroom which means we don't need to hold uh, self-isolate whole class so unfortunately I know too well my my, my son's uh, uh, kind of primary school right now uh, a student that has got it the whole class has to self-isolate that's not the case at UA92 and um, because we've got all this two meters social distancing in place and one-way systems all the way across campus what that means is that in a classroom that previously would have held about 30 students, it's now more like 12, or one that would hold 60 holds about 24. We never had big lecture theatres, and I think big lectures with 200, 300 people are never realistically going to return. And I think there's a large problem with that method of teaching anyway. But we've never had that, and so the changes we've had to make are relatively small to that. And so what we've done is our students are, are here most of the time and it's just 25% of them on campus at any one particular time. And in this campus that's designed for thousands with just a few hundred students, that's fairly easy to do. We're obviously influencing everything around kind of washing hands. We've got hand sanitizer points. I think there's 19 of them all the way across campus and lots of other methods that keep people kind of safe and secure. Um, because of the social distancing we've got in place, as you can see with myself and uh, all of my colleagues today, we're not wearing masks once we're socially distanced. And the same goes for students here. They don't need to wear masks when they're on campus, but they do just whilst they're walking around to make sure they stay safe. Um, another thing that you probably didn't see on that video and you wouldn't see if you visit our campus is that we don't have a physical library. This was something we were discussing pre-COVID pre, uh, kind of about the balance uh, in designing a new institution between digital and physical libraries. Obviously, you've designed a kind of university hundreds of years ago, you built a bespoke library, now largely filled with dusty books that sometimes people haven't looked at for, for decades. As a new institution that's only been around just over a year, we've gone completely digital. Um, so all of our kind of e-books are online, all of our journals, everything like that. The real benefit of that means that our students can access them wherever they are. So we've got students studying online in Malaysia and right across the world right now, or whether they're in our student accommodation, whether they're on campus, or whether they're at home with their parents, they don't need to worry about whether they can access things. Equally means that we don't need to clean books and worry about all that process as they come back in, because all of our equipment is safe. Next slide, please, Gary. And so, as most of you are no doubt familiar with, the DfE has issued guidance um, to universities alongside colleges and schools in terms of the tiers um, that they operate in. We explain it to our students in stages to avoid this kind of confusion around tiers. So right now we're operating in stage one, equivalent to the DfE's guidance for universities of tier one, um, which is that we're providing a blended learning, but that is 50% of our uh, 50% of our teaching on campus, in classes, kind of face-to-face -face with the tutors, and then 50% over Microsoft Teams. What I'd say is that isn't just go away and watch a YouTube video or go and read a book. That absolutely is a case of them being taught in the same way. So I promise to our students that I'll talk about a bit later about being taught for 16 hours a week happens whatever. Most universities, particularly in Manchester, and I, and I appreciate they don't have a choice in this um, because of their size, but Manchester Met, uh, University of Manchester, et cetera, they're operating far nearer to stage three right now, where pretty much everything is online and um, barring kind of a few practicals. I, I think they have no choice but to do that, but ultimately for universities, is real, realistically going forward is an environment where you put tens of thousands of young people together, realistic, or do we need to look at alternative providers to higher education such as UA92 that have got a much smaller and kind of bespoke offering. But whatever happens, we'll keep that 16 hours of teaching. So you can see all the way, if we moved all the way online as we were back at the start of the pandemic in March, 
we still offered that 16 hours of face-to-face -face teaching. And actually, we did our student modular surveys for our students there. And of the entire year, we actually got our highest satisfaction rates across that block, proving that students were really willing to continue to engage with us online. So what students know, uh, and you can kind of say to kind of your year 13s right now in applying to classes, you're not applying for something and then we're going to be handed something completely different. What we say we're going to do is what we're going to deliver. And we will only flex across this stage one to stage four in terms of the way we deliver our teaching uh, in accordance with the kind of guidance that we get from, from government. But certainly we've worked very closely um, with public health in Trafford um, and indeed kind of speaking to kind of sector representatives as well. And they're really happy with the way that we're operating around stage one. And it's led to very, very low cases amongst our students right now. Um, I, I looked at this morning, we, we have three students self-isolating at present, um, which kind of is, I think, reassuring considering some of the figures that we saw elsewhere um, earlier in the year. So I'll move on from COVID now and back to, for those who are familiar with UA92, you may know this very well, for others this might be completely new. But obviously being a new institution, we came together kind of a, as a unique partnership founded by the class of 92. Some people go, you don't need to explain the class of 92 to me and others, not football fans won't be aware of them, but a class of 92, famous Manchester United footballers who won the treble for United back in uh, 1999. Um, but came to prominence winning the FA Youth Cup in 92 initially. Um, so they're, they're there and they had they uh, were inspired by everything they learned by Sir Alex Ferguson. So they were great players, but it's more kind of the ethos and the determination, the resilience they instilled in them, which led to them to kind of want to give back and be successful in their careers, both kind of as footballers, but as kind of business people, journalists, etc., as they've continued to thrive beyond that. So they partnered with Lancaster University. Um, if you look at any of the league tables, both uh, Guardian University uh, Guide and Complete University Guide, top 10 elite university uh, in kind of uh, the, the northwest of England, well recognised uh, across the UK and indeed across the world, brings that kind of real academic credibility um, to UA92. And then finally, and I'll talk about this a bit more with our partners, we didn't want to just say, oh, it's a great business degree because our academics have written a great business degree. We partnered uh, with business and industry leaders to make sure that it's not a great theoretical degree, it's a great practical degree, giving our students all the skills that they need to be successful at the other end. And I think that's one particularly view all right now as careers advisors, and I know one that Gary will talk about later, is kind of, it's that kind of real world learning and that partnership with kind of major employers like Microsoft, KPMG, that really helps UA92 to stand out. And so I mentioned Lancaster University. Um, and so if you come to UA92, you get the benefits of all the way that we deliver our teaching, which I'll talk about sh shortly. But equally, everybody, whether they leave with a certificate in higher education or they leave with a full degree in any of our subjects, all of these qualifications are awarded by Lancaster University, which means that they carry, carry real kudos, um, get entry into the relevant graduate schemes and everything like that. So real, real uh, currency for your students wherever they go in the future. And we know for lots of kind of new providers, this would be a real kind of achievement to have. But it means you can trust in the fact that a Lancaster University will hold them in good stead, whatever they choose to do after they graduate from UA92. So I mentioned some of our, our partners, and I'm just going to pick out a few here, but these are the kind of broad range of partners that we work with um, are kind of across our degree programs. I'm going to start with uh, Microsoft. And um, so Microsoft are heavily involved in our computer science program um, and have been integral in terms of developing it make sure it's got all of the skills and talents in it that they need from employees. So they, they've been very keen that it focuses on coding in the first year. So we get students really up to speed with all their coding skills that they could then take into the workplace either after one year or indeed after three. But we've equally partnered with Microsoft um, around Microsoft Teams. So we haven't got a kind of uh, virtual learning environment specific just for UA92. What we've done is we've taken the real world tool of Microsoft Teams and everything we do with our students, kind of teaching online, the way they submit their assessments, that's all through Microsoft Teams, which means taking that back into the workplace at the other side, it means that they've already acquired those skills around using it. And it's phenomenally interactive in terms of students sending us queries. I've been dealing with a few this morning and us being able to kind of respond in real time. And the final bit I just want to highlight around Microsoft is 
something that everybody struggles with when they apply for a job, myself included, and certainly I imagine a number of your students is, how do you evidence that you can use PowerPoint, Excel, Word, kind of all those Microsoft Office packages? So we're working with Microsoft to get all of our students certified users of those uh, of the Microsoft suite, which means that's a hard qualification that alongside their degree will make them far more employable at the other side. And then the only other partner I was going to mention briefly was KPMG. So KPMG, obviously a major employer, uh, both in Greater Manchester, but right across the UK as well. They've worked with us on a kind of our accounting program to make sure again that it's got the skills uh, that they expect uh, from people with accounting and finance degrees alongside kind of professional exemptions from SEMA and the AAT. But also they're working with us around social uh, mobility uh, and financial literacy, because whether you're studying accounting or you might be studying fiscal education, if you want to run your own personal trainer business out the other side, you've got to have that financial literacy. And so KPMG work with us around that. And so I could talk about all the various partners all, all day, but you're going to hear a little bit more from both KPMG um, and TalkTalk, um, another one of our great partners, in the next session that Rachel is going to chat. So I'm aware when I scaffold a lot of this, I talk about the way University 92 does things versus the traditional sector, and there's nothing wrong with the traditional sector. Uh, I've worked in a lot of those traditional universities, but when you ask a question about why they do something, quite often the answer is because we've always done it that way. And I think the benefit of starting kind of uh, UA92 from scratch, inspired by kind of what the class of 92 learned from Mr. Alex Ferguson, is that we knew that we wanted to put character and personal development at the core of everything that we do. So it's not just about getting a, a great degree in sports science, it's about inspiring kind of those developments. And so alongside all of their um, subject specific modules, our students do modules around our target talent curriculum on subjects like uh, resilience, uh, communication skills, to it mean that they've got those skills that employers want at a the time they graduate. Alongside that, they get a personal development coach. So they meet with their coach uh, twice in a, every six week blocks. And particularly right now, this goes back to the heart of UN92, that are absolutely names to us, not numbers. We're not dealing with tens of thousands of students here. We're dealing with hundreds of students. And the fact that they will once in a, uh, twice in every six week block get to meet with a personal tutor, a uh, personal coach who can support them not particularly with their academic stuff, but with their broader character development at such a challenging time that we're all experiencing in this pandemic. I know I'm, I'm quite jealous of, of them getting this support. And I certainly think that it'd be something really reassuring to a number of your students, particularly if you feel that they need that kind of additional support. It's something that everybody that comes to UA92 will get. Okay, so what that video would have outlined there, and we will send it around to everybody um, who's engaged today, um, it would have shown you a little bit about our kind of academic structure and the way we do things differently. Um, particularly for those of you with, with BTEC students, there's something kind of familiar about the way UA92 does stuff, and that is that we just do a single module at a time. So students joining us in September, the benefit is uh, if they're doing PE, um, the first module that they'll do is sports psychology, and they just do sports psychology uh, for five weeks. They don't have to worry about kind of everything that, that surrounds that, they're just focused on that one module. And at the end of that, they do a target talent curriculum, and then they take a break. All the assignments, uh, there's no final end of year exams, everything they do in that module is self-contained 
which means from the first point they learn something to when they're assessed in it, there's never more than six weeks. So they then have that break week and then they move on to module number two. Uh, so a different topic, anyone that joins us in November, as we've just had a number of students starting with us, in fact, today, they join in module number two, but nobody's done it before. And they just focus on that one module again for another five weeks in the target talent curriculum. They then get to Christmas and rather than kind of dealing with their contemporaries who might be writing essays or revising for exams that they get hit with in January, they're half done with the academic year. It means they can kind of, over those two, three weeks, they can kind of relax and kind of take a break prior to coming back in January. And then the same, again, kind of they go through January and then into April, two more standalone blocks. The benefit, again, of this model is that it enables kind of multiple start points. So we, I just mentioned we've got students joining us in November and some in January as well. Um, but whatever happens, it enables flexibility. So obviously in these times, we, we hope people don't get ill or something happens, but if they do, this has flexibility. So I'll give you an example. So if we had a student with us that completed all of study block one, but unfortunately was ill in block two, what they'd be able to do is just miss block two and then return in January, study block three in January, block four in April, and then they pick block two up uh, in the summer, and then they'd be able to carry on uh, and kind of reset for their second year, starting again in September, as opposed to in a traditional academic model, where you may have missed a bit of three or six modules, and you might need to reset the whole year with all the student finance and debt implications. This is kind of really clean. The other benefit that allows from this is it enables accelerated degrees. And we know these aren't for everybody, but the reality is that if you study six blocks a year rather than four, you can complete the degree program in, in just two years. And, and for those at your schools and colleges right now, it will seem quite familiar in terms of the fact they're doing six, six week blocks, broadly what they do with you. If they study 36 weeks a year of us, they can graduate in two years and really accelerate their career and come back kind of uh, and enter the workforce at a time that might be uh, kind of really suitable and persons come in. We know it's not for everybody, absolutely it's hard work, but it's a real opportunity allowed by our model um, for students to, uh, to study in this way. And uh, next slide, please, Gary. Well, actually, can we go back to the one before that slide, Gary, first? Sorry. Yes, so in terms of our timetable, uh, another thing fairly unique about UA92, we accept that our students, they will be full-time students, but the reality of being a full-time student is lots need to have part-time jobs, they may have caring responsibilities, they may have children, all kinds of different ways that we need to make sure that a timetable works for them. What we offer is flexibility, but we offer flexibility by actually being really kind of straightforward in terms of what we're going to do. So if you're a morning student, you start, uh, you, you, you will start um, from the very first day you come to induction, like we did for November starters last week. If you're a morning student, you'll be 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And you'll be that from the first day you come right through to when you graduate, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Even if we move online, that doesn't change. They'll remain morning students. For, so for our morning students right now, what they're doing is Monday on campus, four hours, Tuesday, four hours, but all over Microsoft Teams. Wednesdays are different, so that enables students to, they might be volunteering, uh, they might be competing for our teams in British University College of Sport, hopefully back up and running in January, um, or they might have part-time jobs or anything else. That gives them that flexibility. There's some work to do on a Wednesday, but it's not a specific time. They can do it at eight o'clock in the morning, three in the afternoon, or kind of in the middle of the night, whatever works for them. Then back in on the Thursday here on campus, and then Friday all online. So as I mentioned, whatever happens, we'll stick with that 16 hours of teaching. As restrictions ease, hopefully go back to 16 hours on campus. If it went tighter still, then we have that ability to go fully online. And the same goes for our afternoon students. The same kind of principle applies, then they'll stick with that timetable the whole way through. So if you're a mum who knows that they always want to drop their uh, daughter off at school or your uh, father with a part-time job in the morning, whatever you're doing, this timetable means that you know your commitments won't change. So you can shape the rest of your life around your university timetable. It seems really basic, but we know the reality is 99% of institutions just flex their timetable all over the place and your kind of current students, um, they're just expected to deal with that. And that is not the way the real world works. We need a kind of a, a better way for the timetable work. So Gary, um, could you keep going forward, please? 
So that's everything from me today. Hopefully um, you found it a useful day. Um, there's more on our courses. We're not talking too much about our courses today, but you can see kind of the broad spheres that we operate in. All of these are focused around kind of the industry needs of our partners. So we're not offering kind of degree programs where people are just going to learn them uh, and come out with a great degree that is just a piece of paper. They're really gaining those practical skills to go into employment. So you can see across business, media, sport and digital, really practical courses. Um, one of our newest ones is sport journalism. Uh, and we've got kind of as one of our tutors right now, um, Phil Jones. Um, and for any of you kind of familiar with kind of watching any of London 2012, uh, you saw kind of Jess Ennis being interviewed, Mo Farah, Usain Bolt. That was Phil Jones. Every time you'd see Phil Jones there. And so when he pops up on Teams, he's got his little icon of himself with Usain Bolt, which I'm quite jealous of. But it shows you kind of the real practical element that our kind of tutors are bringing in. Um, and on our kind of journalism course, we've already got a student who's out there kind of got a job as a reporter um, alongside their, their work. Likewise, on our physical education course, we've got two of them kind of working with Salford City as sport coaches through the kind of connections that we've built for them all. All our courses listed there, all third degrees are kind of 104 uh, UCAS points and 64 points uh, with regard to um, how you get onto our certificate in higher education. I think that's all from me. So thanks so much for attending today. I'm going to be around for the rest of the day um, and I'll hand you back to Andrew um, shortly. Um, uh, the, the kind of key message for your students is obviously we're open to apply now and um, for those mainly I suspect interested in September next year. But if you've got any learners who end at different points of the year or indeed your alumni, uh, key things for them to look at is that they can apply to still start and join with us in January. And we've got a range of different kind of bursaries available that we've created uh, for them, including our Kickstart grant, which is 92 £5,000 grants funded by the class of 92 to help those most impacted by COVID. So people that have lost their job or the parents have lost their job around COVID um, or people who have moved on to universal credit as a result of it. So hopefully that's given you a good kind of overview of what we offer at UA92. If any of your students want to find out more from our students directly, they can go across to our website and there we've got, we've uh, partnered with Unibuddy and they can chat to any of our students directly. Um, so we've got students across all of our courses there. So thanks so much and I'll hand you back over to Andrew.